Wow, it is bright up here. Okay. So, um, good evening, everyone. My name is Noah Henry, and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about social media's fashionable side. Um, but before we get into that, I'd like to get some uh, participation out of you guys. Is that possible? Yeah? All right, cool. So let's start this off by give, uh, give me a show of hands of how many of us in here, this is definitely excluding me, saw the first days of the internet. Okay. <laughs> um, most importantly, how many of you guys remember seeing this screen right here? <laughs> All right, now from these people who saw this screen, how many of you guys doubted the internet's success? Um, <laughs> and didn't think that things like email or the internet in general wouldn't catch on because why wouldn't I just call you or write you? <laughs> so now, how many of you guys are active on social media? This includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, FarmersOnly.com, different things like that. <laughs> yeah? All right. So now, last question, I promise. How many of you in here see social media as an effective marketing tool? Okay. So, just as we definitely saw doubt with internet catching on and, social, uh, and email catching on and stuff like that, there are definitely people who doubt the inter, uh, social media success in terms of marketing. But that's why I'm here today, is to prove to you that social media is an incredibly effective marketing tool and has now become a very uh, commonplace thing in our society and has already affected some people's lives greatly. And this, the, social media has opened new doors for them, like <laughs> um, e-commerce. So, um, a lot like Amazon, we all know that on the internet, you can buy anything you want, anytime, anywhere. It's crazy. Additionally, you have access to many things like sales all the time, shopping from the comfort of your own home, using a credit card, you don't need cash anymore, and most importantly for me, you avoid the drive to the Galleria, fighting for parking for 15 minutes, going to Macy's, finding out they don't have the freaking shirt you wanted, and then you have to drive back home. And I promise you, that's the second worst thing behind seeing that stupid SPCA commercial on TV. <laughs> but before I get into proving you some of the effectiveness, I want to show you how social media marketing and influence has affected me in the past four years. So this is me, it's 2015. Pretty accurate diagram, the only thing that needs to be changed is my head needs to be a lot bigger. So obviously in 2015, I was a freshman in high school, I was going to a new place, new people, and I didn't have a lot of friends from middle school. In this new school, there was a lot of new things, clothes, social media, shoes, all that cool stuff. And it was the first time in three years I was actually allowed to dress on my own. Not, and I didn't have to be in a branded school uniform, and my mom didn't have to pick out my outfit every day. Therefore, there were obviously other kids at school that had really cool clothes and shoes. And I began to delve myself into that. I wanted to have what they had. I wanted to have swag. <laughs> so I, I began to delve myself into what I saw a lot of my peers doing. Shoes. I began to look at clothes more. I began to be more active on social media. But more importantly to me, a lot like, much like many other high school boys in my time, I thought a lot about girls. Now, I know some of you ladies in the audience are thinking that's not only a high school thought but that's another TED Talk, we'll get into that later. However, I picked up on the idea that women liked a well-dressed man, and this realization spurred me to adversely delve, uh, delve into the expansive world of fashion. I also began to realize the implications of my passion. I began to do something called reselling. For those of you who may not know what reselling is, it's buying uh, clothes or shoes at retail price points and selling them later for a profit at what's known as re on the resale market. I started to keep up with drop lists, drop lists that were posted on Instagram. I started to follow more brands on Instagram, and I began to also follow the designers to learn about them a lot more than I did before. And I actually found a lot of success. But fast forward four years later, I had to pick my AP research topic. Um, and the AP research is a year-long project in which I would conduct hard research to prove a topic on a gap that I saw in the world. A lot of my peers chose really incredible subjects, adoption, Texas school system, memorization, and I had fashion. But I knew I wanted to do something that I was very passionate about. I knew I wanted to incorporate social media. I knew I wanted to do something that I could comfortably prove on a stage like this. So I moved to do some research, and I found a, a database called List. For those of you who may not know, List is a website that tracks the uh, uh, quarterly searches of certain brands and certain products and ranks them every single quarter of the year. On May 9th, 2019, uh, List posted the first quarter of uh, the 2019 Fashion Index. 
Um, in this, there were 20 of the most popular brands in the world, but today we're going to be focusing on some of the most popular products in the world. So if you look to my right, your left, um, number two up there, that's a Prada-studded headband. I know many of you may not believe this, studs are in right now. And because of this, people began to search about it a lot more. Um, actually, for, for example, Prada searches for this exact headband increased 300% within the past three months. You look at number seven for me, it's called a Nike Pro Hijab. It's an athletic hijab that many female athletes may want to wear. The main competitor to the Nike Pro Hijab recently stopped making their hijab, their athletic hijab, and was met with lots of backlash. However, once they realized that there was still one very reputable uh, athletic hijab on the market, it increased Nike's uh, social mentions by 4,900% and allowed the hijab to land number seven on the, on the spot for most popular women's products. Now, moving on to the men's side over here. If you look at the women's side in comparison, you'll see purses, belts, even clothes. Look at the men's side, what do we got? Shoes. Yeah, we love shoes, huh? But, you know, actually, shoes and all of them being shoes um, for one quarter is the first time this has ever happened. And if you actually look at that list and you count how many Nike shoes there are, there are six main Nike branded shoes. They actually have seven, though, the seventh being Converse. To put it in perspective for you, Nike this past quarter has had seven million social media mentions um, over the past three months. Even more so, one pair of Air Force Ones was viewed every single minute. Even more so, some, see number eight right there? Some of you may think, wow, that's so ugly. How can that be number eight? Well, that shoe right there was a reimagination of the Air Max 98, generated 77,000 social media mentions in 2019. Number nine right there is an example of a shoe that sells for a lot on the resale market, currently listed at 267% above the retail price point. More than 25 million people talked about sneakers on social media this quarter, and with Nike holding seven spots on that top 10, it shows their grip on the, on the tight grip on the retail and resale market. It illustrates how um, one brand can be large enough to influence the entire world. Now, we all know Nike has one main competitor, that's Adidas. Count how many Adidas shoes are up there. You may not be able to find it, it's one. Number two, that's a Yeezy. Famous man, Kanye himself, Adidas only has one shoe on the list that really puts into perspective right now what Nike's doing. So if that's not enough to prove to you um, how effective social media really is in the world, I can give you some real-world examples with some real designers. The man behind me is named Virgil Abloh, uh, creative director and owner of Off-White, which is the number one most popular brand in the world, as determined by list. And he recently did a collab, or his brand, rather, recently did a collab with the uh, famous water company Evian. I know many people think, wow, a fashion company makes a water bottle, what? I know, right? It's really cool. Um, but for example, this shows how effective uh, Virgil's been on social media. He actually revealed that the bottle was coming out on his Instagram page, as well as Evian revealing it on their Twitter. And with uh, reuse, reusability and sustainability being the, one of the most popular things in today's world, the, people knew that this bottle was going to sell out quick. In fact, on February 25th, 2019, when the bottle did actually come out, it sold out in seconds. At a retail price point of $60, you can find the bottle for upwards of $100 on resale sites currently. However, Ablo's util utilized social media to his advantage in many other ways other than just the Evian example. He used his platform to debut Off-White's collaboration with IKEA, and I know, clothing company, sweetest furniture brand, but they did do it. And on May 10th, 2019, one of the rugs released with only 3,000 in the US, they sold out the first day by 11 a.m. Now, let's talk about some clothes, though. Off-White's collabed with Nike, and they created 10 silhouettes, and the collection was known as the 10. Now, with many colors of these shoes releasing, there were over 50 that released, and you can't find a shoe less than $600. All of these shoes were debuted on social media, and all of these shoes go for a pretty penny in today's world. Ablo is able to create anticipation for his new products and collaborations through social media with his constant posts, retweets, and talk around him on social media. And he's constantly able to use social media to his advantage. Man behind me now is Ronnie Feig. He's the creative director for the brand Kith. And he also frequently previews new collabs on his personal Instagram page. Through this, he's able to build anticipation uh, for the release of the clothes, also allowing them to sell out in seconds, much like Off-White's. 
pictured our two recent collabs. On the top, we have Kith, Converse, and Coca-Cola, all in one collab. These prices range anywhere from $300 to $700, depending on the color that you want to get. This bottom one right here hasn't come out yet. It's Kith and Tommy Hilfiger. For the past two weeks, Mr. Ronnie has been doing nothing but talking about uh, Tommy Hilfiger and talking about his inspiration. In fact, if you look at the pictures, on the right, you can see his inspiration for the shirt that's pictured on the left. Well, excuse me. No, you're right. <laughs> um, Kith is a highly respectable brand in, uh, in streetwear right now. And thusly, since he actually uses social media to his advantage, it allows the, um, so the following platform to get really intrigued about the new drops. Due to the brand dropping every Monday and him constantly posting, he constantly gets new people and old people tuning in every Monday and making the clothes sell out in seconds. Houston, Levin Tra Houston legend Travis Scott has also, also has a hand in social media marketing and showing its effectiveness. Recently, on April 20, 30th, 2019, Scott celebrated his 28th birthday. The night before and the day of, there were numerous posts talking about expecting a shock drop of the shoes. And the shoes that we were expecting to drop were those Jordan ones right there, the one with the reverse swoosh and the really ugly color. That one. Of course, sure enough, later that night on April 30th, we did see the shoes come out. The way we knew the shoes came out, you ask? He posted a picture with the link on the bottom, and he tweeted out the link. And they sold out in a very quick minute, leaving those who missed the post just by a few seconds to straw because they didn't get their shoes. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West recently released their Yeezy 700 geode. To, um, and to market this shoe, Kim and Kanye erected numerous lemonade stands around the country um, with limited quantities of each shoe, with one being in Missouri City, where you could purchase the shoes um, and essentially get them before they came out. Whenever, the way people knew about these shoes being there was by Kim actually posting about these lemonade stands. When she posted about them being around the US, people flocked to them and, spurred, and caused the shoes to sell out in a few hours at these lemonade stands. In addition to having these shoes sell out before the release date, all the proceeds that were received from this lemonade stand were donated to mental health organizations, boosting Yeezy social mentions by 142% in just 24 hours. Fear of God cre creative director Jerry Lorenzo recently collaborated with Nike, releasing two silhouettes in his first co collection. If you recall to the list slide I had earlier, that bottom shoe right there is the one that's going for 267% above retail price point. Once, much like Ronnie Feig, Kith's creative director, Lorenzo actively reveals new products on Instagram, and as expected, these products sell out. Lorenzo previewed the shoes on his Instagram, gradually building the hype on the, uh, as he revealed more and more about the shoe's creation, about shoes blueprints, and most importantly, about the shoes inspiration. These things that he did adversely built the hype around the shoe. And when the shoes did come out, they sold out almost instantly, both online and in store, causing mentions to rise as well as the hype for the coming collections. As we can see here, there's a very common trend in what people, uh, what and how influencers use social media. As I've stated in all of these examples, whenever they post about it, hype is built. Whenever the shoe comes out, it's gone before you know it. But I hope to prove to you that, um, both to you and society, that as marketing, uh, as marketing develops, so does the methods that we use along with it. Social media marketing is something that really should not be uh, counted out. While I did cover fashion, it's clear that this marketing can be conducted in other industries too allowing the reach of any brand, any organization, any cause to be exponentially greater through the simple post of a photo, the simple post of a tweet, or the simple post of a snap. From this talk, I urge you to take away the notion that social media is not to be written off like many did for email and the internet. It will be just as commonplace in the next 10 years just as email is for us now. So, next time you're scrolling through your feed and you see an ad, I want you to think about how many people have seen that ad how much it has reached new people. With hundreds of millions of people using social media every day, it's clear to see how effective social media has been, is now, and will be in the future. Thank you.